Thank you for joining us on day two of jury deliberations in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. Right now, we have several different crews in Kenosha following new developments at the courthouse today, and we begin with our Vince Vitrano anchoring our coverage in front of where it's all happening. Vince, it sounds like the jury has been busy today. Yes, good afternoon, Ryan. The 12 jurors are working to come to a decision on each of the five charges the Illinois teacher, uh, teenager faces. Jurors are pouring over those charges against the teen who shot three people, killing two in Kenosha during the riots following the police shooting of Jacob Blake. In the past hour, the judge making a decision about how and where this jury can watch video evidence if they want to. Outside the courthouse on the steps, that's just over my shoulder here, a relatively small group, but increasing in volume from time to time. Those supporting Kyle Rittenhouse and those looking for a conviction or multiple convictions in this trial. I would describe the atmosphere as charged, but not by my observation tense at the moment. But a lot of folks are here. Let's bring in Andrea Albers. He's a little bit closer to that. He's been monitoring the deliberations as well through the morning. Andrea, the jury is back at work, and we've seen a few things play out in the courtroom as well this morning. Yes, we have. The jury began deliberating around 9 a.m. this morning, and it was just a short while ago that the prosecution, the defense, and the judge were all back in the courtroom because the jury had a question. They wanted to know whether they should watch videos in private or in the courtroom. The decision by both sides was that the jury should return to the courtroom to view those videos, and we do expect that will get underway shortly. The discussion also turned to how many times the jury could watch or rewatch videos. Judge Bruce Schrader said it would be insulting to the jury to tell them that they have restrictions on viewing videos. And the, the defense did leave court to do some research on that topic. The judge also took some time to address news coverage and comments. He's been reading about himself and the attorneys. He called some of them frightening and said he may reconsider allowing live stream video of his trials in the future. The judge also pushed back against what he called irresponsible statements in the press about why he's not yet ruled on the mistrial request from the defense. I haven't even had a chance to read the motion to dismiss. I just got it yesterday. And I really think before I rule on a motion, I should let the state respond. So why anyone would think that it's odd for the judge to sit on a motion to dismiss, I have no idea. And Judge Schrader did tell the court that he thinks people should have confidence in the outcome of this trial. And Vince, as I said, the prosecution, the defense, Kyle Rittenhouse, the judge, they are all back inside the courtroom. The jury is going to return momentarily so they can begin watching the videos that they'd like to see. Andrew, let me ask you a little bit more about the crowd behind you, because it is, as I said before, relatively small. but here and there vocal. I know there was some tension yesterday and we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, coming up, but what are you seeing today in terms of how people are interacting with each other on these opposing sides? Sure. Well, you can probably hear it. This this crowd behind me is growing a little louder, a little larger, but it's still smaller than what we saw yesterday and not as confrontational. There are some familiar faces in this crowd, and I spoke to some of them earlier this morning. The same people that were here yesterday are back again today, and they say they'll be here until the verdict is announced. All right, Andrea Albers reporting live for us outside the courthouse. And while we await that verdict, many people here are trying to predict exactly what the outcome is going to be, trying to read the jury and what is happening when that verdict will come in. I talked with defense attorney and legal analyst Patrick Cafferty this morning, who says that it really can be difficult to tell ahead of time. When lawyers hear questions that jurors ask or uh, whether they ask for instructions, things of this uh, nature, they're working off of very little information and they're trying to predict what that might mean for a verdict. So we, we speculate. And here, what I would speculate is that because each juror now has their own jur jury uh, instruction packet, that they have the ability to act completely independently. They have the information right there in front of them. They can study it. They can make their arguments to the other uh, jurors based on what they read in the reports and how they meld that with what they saw in the courtroom so that will the, that will allow for healthy robust discussion among the jurors which is a good thing 
Uh, talking with Cafferty, he also mentioned that because it can take time for the court to provide the jury with evidence that they are requesting, you saw that play out already this morning, they could be in for a long haul. Coming up in about 30 minutes, uh, we're going to bring Patrick Cafferty out here live. We'll talk about where the jury is at this hour and the developments that have already played out here today. Again, there are a number of protesters still out here in front of the courthouse. At times yesterday, as I referenced, it did get heated between them. Nothing turned violent. And last night, about 6 o'clock, as soon as the demonstrators learned that the jury was leaving for the evening and that there would be no immediate verdict, things pretty much cleared out rather quickly. As we continue to wait for that verdict, the Kenosha County Sheriff's Department and Kenosha Police Department both say at this point there is no plan to shut down roads or issue a curfew here in Kenosha. The girlfriend of the second man who was killed by Kyle Rittenhouse is back here in Kenosha. She's been doing interviews awaiting this verdict. Hannah Giddings was with her boyfriend Anthony Huber last summer here protesting the police shooting of Jacob Blake. The defense says Huber attacked Kyle Rittenhouse with his skateboard. He's the one you see in all of those videos with the skateboard. And that Rittenhouse killed Huber in self-defense. Well, the prosecution and Hannah say that Huber was trying to stop what he perceived at the time to be an active shooter. It's been more traumatic than I really thought it would be. Like, we all knew the trial was coming, obviously. Anthony Huber's family is already suing several Kenosha authorities, claiming that they failed to intervene and incited violence by allowing armed civilians to clash with protesters. You can find out the verdict as soon as we know there is one. Just download the TMJ4 News app and there will be an alert sent right to your phone as soon as the jury reaches the decision. The app is free to download. For now, we're going to send it back into the studio here, and Ryan will be here and joining you once again at the bottom of the hour. Ryan? Okay, Vince, thank you. We will check in soon, and we are going to turn now.